Yeah, we live. All right. Shabbat Shalom. This is the Brothers from GMS Louisiana Saints, the New Orleans camp with another live Shabbat lesson. But before we get started, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Akim out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. Shabbat Shalom. And we're going to start it off in Joel chapter 2, verses 30 to 31. Okay, this is Joel 2 and 30. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Keep going. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Most High come. And as you can see on the screen, we've got an article from WayneDupree.com titled, Pluto returns to United States in 2022, the year of the turn up of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, is coined by Apostle Tahar. The last time that happened was July 4th, 1776, which was, of course, the, uh, the, the birth of what you know was the United States of America, which we know is biblically known as Babylon the Great. But as it says in Joel chapter 2, verse 30, and I will shew wonders in the heavens, and this astrological event dealing with uh, Pluto is a wonder in the heavens and as it keeps going on and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood and there's been over these past couple of years there's been a lot of lunar and solar eclipses um, and and just a lot of things going on in in the second heaven or space and we know according to the scriptures that the most high before he does great things choose signs and great wonders in the heavens and since we're in 2022 the year yahweh by hashem yahweh shah turning things up you can only expect that to happen and we can clearly see that a lot of events are happening as we speak right now you've got that whole situation going on over in eastern europe with ukraine you've got uh, the supply chain disruptions the uh, the protesters up in canada you name it and as a uh, and and of course What's coming up next month? The Passover. And two years ago, when we had the Passover, what happened immediately after that? This whole crack of muffin 19 situation kicking off. So with the way things are looking and with the signs in the heavens, a something something major is gonna definitely, of course, pop off after this Passover, but a something could pop off before then. But as it says at the end, before the great and terrible day of Yahweh come. But all in all, we know this great and terrible day is coming. Mass death, destruction, misery, and judgment on not only two-thirds of the nation of Israel who ref refuse to return back into their power, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, but you heathen nations as well living, li living wickedly, mainly you Edomites, the so-called white people. But hey, we're not scared when we see things or read things like this. These are the times we've been preaching about and diligently waiting for, the faith and the patience of the saints because we know all these things must come to pass before the kingdom is a he of heaven is established so hey we want this to turn up exponentially but now we'll get into this article just showing uh, what was very interesting about pluto returning i guess I i'll read i don't know if you believe in signs but if you do I've got a doozy for you, and it involves the planet Pluto. On February 22nd, 2022, 22222, the planet Pluto will come back to the United States. The last time this happened was July 4th, 1776, the very day America, Babylon the Great, was founded. Astrologically speaking, Pluto represents destruction and rebirth. And what was it called when Esau Edom came back and started coming back into power? The Renaissance or the rebirth. And then on a July 4th, 1776, when Pluto, Pluto showed up, what did you have? The birthing of the United States of America. But it also says Pluto represents destruction. So what can that mean? If, if uh, at first you had the rebirth of Esau coming back into power with, these, uh, with this astrological sign mm -hmm. taking place, this wonder in the heaven, 
okay? That means the destruction is about to come. And we can clearly see that the destruction is about to come from Esau Edom's entire system, chiefly the United States of America. I got a Kind, kind. Let's see. Uh, this is this is Second Ezra six and seven. It says, "Then answered I and said, What shall be the part in the sun of times? Or what? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow it?" And he answered and said unto me, "From Abraham unto Isaac, when Ab when when Jacob and Esau were born." Of him, Jacob handheld first the hill of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. And we can clearly see that we're in the in the end times, so to speak, the end of the age of the rulership of the heathen nations. And who's ruling right now? These so-called white people, these so-called Europeans, Americans, whatever you want to call them, but they're the biblical Edomites. But as it says, Esau is the end of this world. The destruction of this world and Jacob is the beginning, the rebirth of it that followeth the kingdom of heaven, where the true children of Israel, who are you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, are going to rule in for eternity. And as we read in Joel chapter 2, verse uh, 30, the Most High will shoot signs in the heavens before the great and terrible day of judgment. And this is just a, a clear example of it. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, when this astrological event takes place and after it. And again, we know that the Passover is coming up and things always turn up before and, and definitely after the Passover. But uh, back to the article. Here's a thread that someone put together on the event. It might be a little woo-woo, but it's really interesting. On 2-22-22, will be a once in a 248 year event and when you add 248 together what do you get the number 14 and that's double sevens it's a double completion pluto is going to con con conjunct return to the united states and remember pluto can mean rebirth and destruction so if it's returning it means it meant one event at one point and now it's come to mean another event the last time this happened was on July 4th, 1776, the exact founding day of America. Astrologically, Pluto brings destruction and rebirth. Now listen to this, Rome fell when Pluto returned. And we know that America is part of this reincarnated Roman empire. Those iron toes mixed with ivory, my, those iron toes mixed with miry clay in Daniel chapter two, the NATO EU alliance that the US is a part of and we can see that Rome is exhibiting all the things that happened to it before it collapsed. Its military spread then, its money devalued to damn near nothingness, upheavals, famines, a deteriorations at the borders with immigrants coming in, et cetera, et cetera. First, Pluto return, 219 AD, the Roman Empire's natal Pluto is at 27 Cancer. The empire experienced a Pluto return during the year 218 to 220 AD. This was a period of a terrible ending after a great expansion. Second Pluto return, 464 AD. This was during the reign of some puppet emperor or other. From 461 to 472, it was the Germanic general Reisimer who managed the Western Empire. Historians end the empire in 476 AD when the Germanic king Odacer deposed Romulus Augustulus. And uh, the end of the empire in 476 AD was the end of the Western half of the Roman Empire. But what continued on? The Eastern half of the Roman Empire, which eventually became the Byzantine Empire. And who was in rulership of the Eastern Roman Empire? Israel. A, a, the southern kingdom that had been all up in Europe. They, they, were, they were the ones that ruled through the Byzantine, through the dark and medieval ages, all the way until Esau came, began coming back into power during his rebirth, his renaissance. And we're seeing something, on a, something similar, but on a whole different level now. Esau's empire is about to collapse, and Jake's going to take over, but he's not going to take over the remnants of uh, America or the European Union or NATO. Jake is going to rule for eternity 
in the kingdom of heaven under Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. But back to the article, second Pluto return, 464. I regret that. It is also very interesting, and this is just a, a little fluff piece. Interesting that Kanye West's new album, Donda 2, releases exactly on this day and also depicts a burning house. How's the United States of America going to go out by those 200 million nuclear missiles burning this place to, to ashes, which may have a double meaning to his personal life, but also a subliminal hint of what's to come to this country, a fire. Kanye West acknowledges the significance of the date in relation to Pluto's return and its astrological implications in an Instagram story post. So you would think that him him just posting a burning house as the album cover is just some artistic flair. But it, what he's about to say goes to show that it, it, there's a much more deeper subliminal meaning to it. Remember, and also you had uh, Kanye West talking about Israel and being a part of <laughs> a part of the 12 tribes of Judah. Remember that 22 is the number of the master builder in occult practices. It is also interesting that this day will be the 22nd day of the second month of the 22nd year of the second millennia since Hamashiach's birth, Anno Domini. I do not have any particular inclination to believe that something will happen on this exact day, but I do believe that it signifies a turning point in history. Hey, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. A new age about to come, a new world, a new cosmos. I believe it signifies that we are in the season of destruction and rebirth, order out of chaos, order ab chao, which we know that these elites, these Edomites like the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, DuPonts, Gettys, Merovingians, you name it, think that through uh, they're going to be like that phoenix rising out of the ashes and in their version of order out of chaos, and they're going to collapse the current system and kill off a lot of people and bring about their uh, their great reset that NW zero, but there will be order out of chaos, the kingdom of heaven being established on earth. But let's keep an eye on this date and this season that we are in. Big things are certainly coming, and most people believe that we are reaching an awakened age of enlightenment, peace, and prosperity. But be not deceived, we are reaching the end of God's biblical timeline, and we are coming into an awakened age of enlightenment peace and prosperity, but it's not going to be the, the age of Aquarius where people are going to be living by these, these new age philosophies and being hippies, holding hands and picking fruits off the of trees. The new age of enlightenment and peace of prosperity is the kingdom being established and the laws, statutes and commandments of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai being enforced on this earth with Israel at the top and you heathen nations going into slavery and building up the kingdom of heaven, building up that age of prosperity for the first thousand years of it. Another interesting piece of information was just given to me. Two times two times two times 222 equals 1776. Also on the image of Independence Hall on the $100 bill, the time on the clock tower reads 222. Two plus two plus two plus two, et cetera, et cetera, equals 12. And 12 is the number of government, hey, the 12 tribes. 12 tribes coming back together, hey, the, the, the 12,000 men from each of the 12 tribes of Israel, they just completion, the 12 gates with the names of the elders on, with the names of the elder, with the apostles and the 12 tribes of Israel in the kingdom of heaven. You can't make this stuff up. What could this mean? Personally, I believe this predictive symbolism is foreshadowing that points us back to the destruction of one system and the rebirth of another. We are seeing mass resistance and revolution around the world, and there's a shift indeed happening. And can somebody get me second Ezra chapter nine real quick and start at the top? Con, I got this something too. Con, con. You can get your preset first, and then we'll get that second Ezra chapter nine. Con, just to make a quick point too. When you go into Pluto, which was the Roman god of the underworld or the god of wealth, it's fitting that. Pluto is meshing back with, uh, with you know, Earth today. Uh, like it said, what it said at the top is coming around to join in together again. 
Go to the very top. Yeah, Pluto returned to the United States, which is governed by what? The whore. All right, the what? The rich. And remember, Pluto was the what? The god of wealth. And like he says, the end of this covering of this of this whore, which is, you know, she's what? She's into her delicacies, which you know, of course, that's you know where she get her power from. But this James 5 and uh two, it says your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Because again, like you said, they're trying to end the system with this new that 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 old money way, all right, and try to rebirth the new. But again, the law gonna what? Uh, convene in the enterprise. It says your gold and silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were with fire. Ye have heaped treasures together for the last days. Which again, this is a mark and a sign, like he said, be shall be signs in the moon and in the stars. All right, which marks what the end of something, man, the destruction. Okay, and this and this the last the last time this happened was. What that was, uh, uh, three thousand. How long ago that was? Uh, two hundred and forty-eight years ago, which was a. Uh, yeah, I meant to say two hundred. I'd say yeah. three thousand, like three hundred. But yeah, two uh, two hundred forty years ago for what? What you about the, to say? The the birth of the United States of America. Con and look what the Lord always say: better is a what the end of a thing, because what's more credible to the Lord, the end of this whole or the beginning of a man? No, the what? The downfall. That's why it says you have heaped treasures together for the last days, man. All right? Which the Lord is going to visit you in. But that's all I wanted to make because Pluto goes into the God of wealth. All right? And the Lord really about to make the gold and sil silver be cankered. You got it, huh? Okay. And just to back you up real quick, this is Sirach 10 and uh, 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches gotten by deceit. At that gold and that silver being cankered and full of blood the kingdom is translated from one people to another and how was how was esau edom's power structure and especially the united states of america built up on the backs of the so-called negroes latinos and native americans who were raped robbed and murdered by these edomites by unrighteous dealings riches gotten by deceits it would the the kingdom was translated from us to them before those very same actions for them living by the sword they're going to die by the sword the kingdom is going to be translated back to us and also pluto is the roman name for the god of, of uh, riches in the underworld but what's his greek name hades and what does hades go into what do they both go into the underworld which people like to misconstrue with the modern concept of hell and what is he so described as he is a man that cannot be pleased and satisfied but his his desire is as hell here he is getting all these riches, but the grave is never satisfied. So his his lusts, his his his, uh, his madness is never satisfied. But it's it's coming to an end, as we can clearly see. Again, Pluto means a uh, destruction and rebirth. Esau's already gone through his rebirth, through his renaissance, and now he's got to go on the other side of that coin, the destruction. But go back down to that paragraph, Ak Baba Kasha. I got a precept too. Kind, kind. You got it. Then we'll get that second extra nine. Yeah, this is straight to the point. This is Daniel's 5 and 24. Daniel's 5 and 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from me, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Meta, meta, tekel, uh, upshur, upshurson, as I'm saying it right. This you is the interpretation. Huh? I think it's a uh, Eupharson. Yeah, Eupharson. It says, this is the interpretation of the thing. Meta, Yahweh has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the, in the balance and are found wanting. Hey, and when did this take place? At the end of the, the ancient Neo-Babylonian Empire. And what are we living in today? The, the the Babylon the Great, the virgin daughter of Babylon, ruled by these Edomites in the United States of America. And that's beautiful that you brought that out because uh, a couple of years ago, the, the elites have that thing over in, in Sweden, I believe, or Switzerland or Sweden called CERN, that particle accelerator, which they're using to talk to demons and, and try to open portals and shit. And a couple of years ago, they got a one word response back that said tekel. 
and as the brother just read tekel means thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting or insufficient or unworthy that was the most high sin in these elites a sign showing that look you've been weighed in the balance and found to be uh, deficient and unworthy to have the kingdom pretty much your kingdom's coming to an end and now we've got the the the, the many lunar and solar eclipses taking place astrological signs like pluto coming back these end time signs yahweh shai told his disciples to look forward to know that the end was at hand and, and <laughs> hey we're here <laughs> we're here baby and we hey Hey, this this again this isn't a time to be getting getting weak or, or or lackadaisical or anything like that this is a time to be rejoicing and knowing that everything we've been preaching beginning with our apostle elders all the way down is coming to pass right before our very eyes and we know that when the destruction comes first and jacob's trouble what comes after that the kingdom of heaven our, our rest our rulership for eternity but i'm gonna read that last paragraph real quick and then whoever's got that second Ezra chapter nine, you can start at verse one. Hey, it was funny. Okay. Real quick, last night I had a, a wild, crazy dream where I was on a porch and it started to rain real bad, extremely bad, and to the point where this is all spiritual too, you know. To where I think I had some money in my hand and it kind of fell on the ground in the water, and I picked the money up and put it in my pocket, and as I'm going up the stairs, my slipper fell off, but then by the time I can go down and get my slipper, I'm caught in the rain, and then I hear alarms going off. And then the next thing you know, I look to the my left and look to my right, the roofs, blown off houses, the the, the different tile and shit coming off houses, shit flying on the street. And I, all I did went on the porch and kind of balled up, and I looked and I kind of glanced you know, because the water was in my eye. I kind of glanced to the to the left of me, and the house that was next door just just ripped off its foundation. And I was in that guy, it was like a tornado, but in the midst of that happening in my sleep, I'm praying to the most high, praying to the most high. And when I kind of like woke up, or when I kind of like balled up, everything was gone and left with me on the porch, man. And then I kind of just woke up. So like I said, I, I I put that to the point. We know that we know that 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 water is, man, that flood, that wind, you know, we're representing that tornado and stuff. And that's what I'm that's what I'm saying it is. Only ones that are gonna be left and protected. When everything goes to shit, it's the men of the Lord, man. All right, govern and 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 and, and, and govern and rule it in the name of Yahweh Shem Shah, man. Because this this times that we're living in, it's it ain't gonna be like no other. The scripture tell you that, all right. The floods, the winds, the destruction is getting ready. It, it's up on us, man. And I think that one of these brothers already had an article where you know this guy Putin is sending is sending supposedly sending troops in in there, man. It ain't go this domino effect, you know. Lord will this domino effect of you know World War Three, the chip, the implementation of the chip, and so on and so forth happens, man. You're gonna see high gas prices, sedition amongst men. These are the things, these are the things that was foretold and is upon us now because they're happening. All right, the birth pains of this whole America is is those those uh what they call them. Contractions. contractions yeah them contractions are getting hard and heavy now man you can see it no but go ahead I Con, that's that's beautiful that you bring that up because back in that joel chapter 2 what does it say up in verse 28 and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your old men shall dream dreams your young men shall see visions and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Hey, not just the elder brother, but you got a bunch of brothers and, and, and some sisters out there having, having dreams and visions of, of the times to come. The brother uh, Amawan Gabar did a video on a dream he had where he said he was in a house and it was like people were, it was a riot outside of people that were like zombies trying to bust into the doors. And, he, and like the elder brother Prayed on the name of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh shined his dream. The, the brother Amuan Gabar did the same thing. And when the door opened, it was uh, nothing but women coming in, not this, not this mass mob he thought that was coming after him. And before I got onto this video, I watched a little bit of, that, of a, a video from the elder brother in South Carolina that opened up with a bunch of different people having visions and all their having dreams of an event to take place. And they were all very similar. They said everybody was in an uproar in a riot. They were they were burning down buildings and attacking each other. And what's crazy 
is that more than one people in their dreams said that the sky was like red, like like blood red, and that like a circle opened up in the clouds, and they saw they didn't say Yahushai, but they saw the Messiah riding on a white horse and all hell breaking loose. Hey, hey everything is turning up on all levels, physically and spiritually. Hey, if I can add two, Huck, and back what the elder was saying. Hell, I had a dream a few nights ago about a flooded street. You know, I was driving and the brakes locked up and I went into like this big ass mass of water. You know, all these cars and shit was in the water. It was real quick, but I woke up, but I ended up getting out the car. And after I got out the car, I woke up, you know, like you say with the flood and all, brothers having similar dreams. I mean, I just had that thing a few nights ago. Kind, kind. I and got your priest up too. Kind. If I could say real quick, what even though it's talking about a, uh, uh, talking about a, a man being a protection to the woman, I can't remember where it says, but what's it say? A man shall be a covert or a covering, a protection from the wind in that day. And, and the brother, brother had that dream to where he said all, all the wind was coming around him, but he prayed to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and he was he was that own covert in that wind, safe from all that destruction, all that all that all that wind and flood and water. A a man a man as a man of the Lord is about to be finer than the gold of Ophir out here, Akim. Everything we've been prophesying about, of course, of course, the Isaiah four and one. But hey, the protection from Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, the wonders and the miracles, all these are, are, are quickly, quickly coming to pass. Kind, kind, the brother Amua got it. This is Isaiah thirty two and two. A man shall be as an hiding place from the wind and as a covert from the tempest as rivers of waters in a dry place, as a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. And once it say, the enemy shall come in like a flood, that wind and that water and all that, all the calamities of Jacob's trouble coming our way. Esau rolling on us, the, the famines, the race wars, the civil wars, the pestilences, you name it. But a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest, hey, that protective hedge around the men of the Lord and the protective hedge around those that are gathered unto the men of the Lord in that day. I got one to go with that. Kind of, kind of. This is uh, 2nd Ezra 12 and 41. 2nd Ezra 12 and 41, and I'm going to read to about 42. And it says, What have we offended thee, and what evil have we done against thee, that thou has uh, forsaken us and set us here in this place? For, for all the prophets, thou art only... My bad. For all, for of all the prophets, thou only are left us as a cluster of the vineyard of the uh, the vintage, and as all in my bad, and, and and as a candle in a dark place, and as a haven or ship preserved from the tempest, man. Kind, as it says, for of all the prophets, thou only art left of us as a cluster of the vintage. Hey, that cluster of the grapes that is that has been saved under you, how will by Hashem Yahweh as it says in Second Ezra chapter eight. But what does it say about everybody else? They were born in vain, <laughs> they born to the sword. That's right. And as a candle in a dark place, hey, a light upon a hill cannot be hid. And as the haven or ship preserved from the tempest, the enemy coming in like a flood, along with all, a whole host of other calamities coming during Jacob's trouble. Hey, we're going to be centered and stable in that day because we've got wisdom guiding us and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times you brothers got to really in internalize these scriptures which you, which you should be doing by now what's it saying isaiah chapter 65 my servant shall eat and drink but ye shall be hungry and thirst my servant shall rejoice but ye shall lament and mourn and we can see in the news that all over the country you've got talks of these store shelves getting emptier and emptier People getting in brawls up in Pennsylvania because they ran out of steaks. You've got Walmarts starting to put metal cages on steaks because people are stealing them. We're coming into famines, among shortages of other things, pestilences, you name it. That's we're getting through these scriptures. Hey, as long as you're staying firm to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, expect to have that protective hedge around you. You've been faithful and holding up your end of the bargain, and Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai is going to do the same thing. Did you say you had a precept, Kaya? Kind of like me. I kind of, it'll come back around. Kind of, kind of. 
Uh, somebody have that second Ezra chapter nine? I have it before. You got it? Oh, you got it? You can get it, Kabar. I got it. I got it. Got it. Got it. I'm going to just reread this last paragraph and then you got it, Kabar. What could this mean? Personally, I believe this predictive symbolism is foreshadowing that points us back to the destruction of one system and the rebirth of another again for esau is the end of the world and jacob is the beginning of it that followeth we are seeing mass resistance and revolution around the world and there is a shift indeed happening you got a cabar oh uh, y'all can hear me Con. Yeah. all right so second answer is nine starting verse one he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I which I have told thee before. And we're measuring the time diligently by, by reading the scriptures and watching the news and seeing articles like this and filtering it through the scriptures. Then what do we do? We go out and stand upon our watch as those spiritual watchmen on the highways and byways preaching this word, as well as putting up video epistles like this letting it let not a stone be left unturned and everybody here the 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 hopeful elect to tell them what they need to do to stay in the good graces of their power to be protected from these calamities and to tell two-thirds who are hard-headed and don't want to return to their power and you heathens of the judgments to come for all the wickedness you've been committing keep going at uh then shall thou understand that it is the very same time when the highest will begin to visit the world which he had which he made keep going therefore when there shall be seen earthquakes and upwards of the people in the world and what is that last sentence we are seeing mass resistance and revolution around the world a uproars of the people and earthquakes in the world you got that situation going on in canada people protesting in new zealand all throughout 2019 Hey, all the way up until today, you've had people in Europe and other countries protest over the mandates, protest over government corruption, protest over their money being devalued, shortages, all that. And of course, earthquakes are happening damn near daily across the planet. Hey, earthquakes are happening as we speak. Just go to those uh, those earthquake watch sites. Keep going, Ike. Then shall thou well understand that the Most High speak of those things from the days that were before thee, even from be, from from the beginning. Keep going. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Read verse six. Even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and ending in effects and signs. Hey, even so, the times of the highest have plain beginnings in wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs, hey, wonders and signs in the heavens, blood moons, solar eclipses, Pluto coming back into a particular orbit and, and, and powerful works and effects, all these different calamities of Jacob's trouble, which are quickly coming. And we're at the beginning stages of it right now, the beginning of sorrows with again the supply chain disruptions the uproars of the people wars and rumors of wars you name it read verse 7 Act. and everyone that everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed and everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith whereby ye have believed showing that you've got to have faith and works faith that yahweh by hashem yahweh shai is going to do these things and that what we're reading about and linking it up to the scriptures is going to come to pass and, and then by you having that faith you want to show your works found the law statutes and commandments to the best of your abilities putting putting away that old man and becoming that new man in yahweh by hashem yahweh shai and and hitting these streets these highways and byways preaching the word as well as putting up your video epistles There's one more point I, I want to get for you too. Kind, kind. You can get your precept, and then there's one more point I want to get in that article. I'm a what? 
Okay. All right, it's Sirach 2 and 6. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. Time. Reread again. Right. Okay, come on. There's a Sirach 2 and 6. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust in him. Hey, believe in him, having faith in him, he will save thee, and order thy way aright, showing your works, and he will he will be that protection for you under that day, into that day. And uh, Sirach chapter 2 is one of my favorite chapters, because uh, jump down to verse 10, out. Okay. Look at the generations. This is Sirach 2 and 10. Look at the generations of old and see if ever any trust in the Most High and was confounded. Question mark. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Question mark. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Another question mark. And we have plenty of plenty of great signs and, and testimonies and stories of our forefathers, the generations of old, calling on Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and they were saved. Yeah, Daniel's in the Daniel in the lion's den, and one of my favorites, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were where? In a, a Nutramite Kabar. And and one of my uh, my personal favorites, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were where? in, in, in uh, ancient Babylon, and they were about to be thrown into that fiery furnace, but what? They had faith in Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and they didn't bend down to that image King Nebuchadnezzar made, and what happened? They were, it, was, it was four people in that fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and as they said, a man that looked like the son of man, Yahweh Shai, and we can relate that to today, those 7,000 men that haven't bent the knee to Baal, and those men that didn't, 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 uh, Except the the mark, the image, or this beast system, and they're going to ultimately be saved by that from that fire, that new fiery furnace, those nuclear missiles by the Son of Man, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. But uh, you can you can scroll down a little bit, Abuad. I want to get one last little. Let me see. Wait, go back up. Go back up. I don't see what it said. Go back up. Go back. Up. Wait. Go. Go down. Kind. Kind. Keep going down. Keep going. I'll tell you when to stop, but just go kind of slow. Keep going. Hey, uh, Ryan, just to say real quick, while we're okay. looking at the article, it says that Rome fell when Pluto returned, right? Mm-hmm. So what is this empire that we in? The Roman revised, right? Mm-hmm. So sure enough, it's fitting that the Lord bought this background again to really appoint her, to appoint her, her, uh, her fall, man. You no? Know? Which okay. is built up on the same principles. All right? And if the Lord destroy uh, a place built up on wickedness before it's the same what outcome man except this one gonna be as greater all right they got a preset why you find that real fast yeah i'm looking through it on my phone i'm trying to find this one point this, this is uh this made me think about that dream too but also the destruction of the missiles all right for the men of the lord like i said even when i had that when i had that dream last night or so you know, I can actually feel like my body was actually dragging, dragging on the ground to the step, to the railing. The only thing that was holding me there was the railing, man. And as I started to pray the most high, it's like every, I could hear the wind, shit smacking everywhere. And then that's when, you know, I kind of like woke up after that. But this scripture that come to me when thinking about that dream and also that destruction, all right, because the men of the Lord are going to be putting tight, tight squeezes, man, to where they call on the Lord. The Lord and Lord is going to deliver them, man. The Lord will. But this is Isaiah 4. This is Isaiah 4 and, uh, 4 and 4, and I'm going to read down to the end. It says, And the Lord shall be, uh, war when the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment, 
and by the spirit of burning, the Lord and the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and smoke by day and the shining of a burning fire by night for upon all the glory shall be a defense. All right, and this is the point. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and from and for a place of refuge and for a covert from the storm and from rain, man. Con, con. Hey, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot to unpack in there. We're talking about the storm and the rain and being a covert from it, being protected from these calamities of Jacob's trouble. And, and it said also a, a, a covering from the heat. What was it saying, Isaiah, come up into my chambers and hey, getting beamed up onto the chariots and being safe from that heat from those nuclear missiles? But yeah, I couldn't find uh, couldn't find what I, I we probably already went over in the article, so it's pretty much done with the article. But again, as we can see, hey, a lot of things are happening. Apostle Tahar's Dima. 2022 to be the year Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai things up as we read in Joel chapter 2 the Most High is going to shoot shoot signs in the heavens hey, the, and as well as uh, the, the, the sun being darkened and the moon being turned into the blood other astrological events before the coming of his great and terrible day and you, can, and you can clearly see that that day is quickly coming upon us all the end time signs Yahweh Shai told his disciples to look for or either in the process of taking place or taking place as we speak. But uh, let me see. I, got, get... I, got, I could bring that precept out now. Oh, kind, kind. And then somebody hold for me Luke chapter 21. And you can start at 25 and read down to 28. But you got it, Kaya. Yeah. yeah, just, you know, just to reiterate some of the things you were saying. Again, the end is manifest and it's pretty much inevitable. But the Lord tell you in Isaiah that before these things, the former things has passed and, the, and new things do I declare. Like he said, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Like y'all brothers was mentioning, uh, your young men shall see dreams. They shall see visions. You know, and brothers are seeing them. But what they're doing, they're uh, parroting the, the end times. You know, brothers are saying dreams with martial, uh, I mean, martial law. All right, floods coming in, which the flood represents the people. All right, that's going to come down as it speaks about in second address upon those that what fear the Lord. All right, these dreams are not coming to men because they're just you know every they ordinary dreams that you wake up from, man. Nah, what is a is a representation of the holy scriptures, man, which makes the significance of the dream a reality, man, which the Lord spoke about. So now the words is matching the visions men are getting, and guess what they're doing? They come in the past, man. As the Lord says, his word was. But again, the end is manifest and is inevitable. So this is 2nd Edra 16 and 37. It says, behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. Because y'all brothers was mentioning it. But when um, Yachanan got his uh, precept, it kind of, you know, kind of draw back. But I, like you said, I bring it to a nine. It says, as when a woman with child in the ninth month bring it forth her son with two or three hours of her birth, Great pains can pass our womb, which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the wor world shall mourn and sorrow shall come upon every side. Yeah. Okay. And, and when, when that baby's ready to come, that, that baby's coming, it's not staying in there. And when the yeah. contraction, when late, the, that woman is in labor right now, she, she's screaming that baby's crowning and that baby's about to come and, and it's comparing this baby to the plagues of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah during Jacob's trouble that are coming and it says that they shall be not slack and once it says be not deceived the most high is, is, is not mocked he doesn't count slackness as most men count slackness you got people out here hey but as as the brother Amawad at the bottom always likes to say hey those scoffers on the comments and those scoffers on the highways and byways they're becoming less and less that, that 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 voice is becoming uh, much more quiet, almost to the the peep of a mouse. Even the even these scoffers and these dirt bags and scumbags out here, hey, they they starting to see that the words we've been saying, 
are coming to pass. You had this one Jake a uh, couple of months ago who was he was he was slick side talking shit about the apostles, but but at the same time praising them. He's like, yeah, these guys, they they well they got some of this information from books written by a white man, but I've been I've been growing up listening to him preach these things, but everything they've been saying is coming true. Hey, these people are starting to see it. And the only thing to come now is 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 that that judgment end of it, which is not going to be slack. And I was talking to the elder brother earlier about it, like by how 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 because things are moving fast, but to us, we're in this flesh. It seems like it's taking a long time. It, it may seem like it's taking a long time in some instances, and these people seem to be, and they are waxing more wicked. And but but when that when the time for that judgment comes. A most highs is not going to take that foot off the pedal. It's going to be straight, merciless, emotionless judgment until the missiles hit and the elect get beamed up on the chariot. You won't even have so much as a time to time to breathe and catch your breath. I, I was telling the elder brother some some of the judgments of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai are going to be so horrific out here that people are going to have a heart attack from that alone. But just going back to that second Ezra sixteen, it says they shall not be slack, but come upon the whole earth and the world shall mourn and sorrows shall come upon every side of it. Oh, I got a quick one to back you. I got that, that loop for you, too. Kind of, kind of. You got this, it. This, just real quick, uh, Ezekiel 33, verse 33. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet had been among them. Again, when they start to see that everything from our apostle elders all the way down to us that we've been preaching over the years is coming to pass and right in their face, and then they're going to know that a prophet had been among them. But at that point, for most of you, it's already going to be too late. You, you, it's, it's going to be judgment time. And, and as it says in Amos chapter 8, talking about the fame of the word, they're going to run to and fro to seek the, the word of the Most High, but they won't be able to find it. The fair virgins and the young men shall faint for the thirst of these rivers of living waters. And you're just going to have to take whatever's coming your way. As it says in that second Ezra 9, those that loathe my law and despised it, but yet had liberty are, are going to be in a, in a pitiful case. And they're going to know it after death by pain. And especially down here, we always talk about it on this news break app. You've seen judgments going out left and right on men, women, children, you name it. Not just Jake, but heathens as well. The, a new. Uh, some some college age sheet of might just just turned up dead at the hospital. Some Uber dropped her off and, and she had died. So, hey, this, this, this smoke isn't being turned away from anybody. Every idle word that you people have been have been speaking against the, the men of the Lord, it's going to be held to account. And like that woman in labor with those birth pains, hey, she's about to have that baby and you're about to get the get, get your just desserts. But you can get that uh, Luke at. Uh, just the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 21, verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass, then 25 look up. Hmm? 20, start at 25 out. Oh, come, come. Come. And there shall be, verse 25, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Hey, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon solar eclipses and lunar eclipses and in the stars signs in the heavens pluto making its return amongst a whole host of other astrological events taking place and upon the earth distress of nations the uproars of the people nation beginning to rise against nation you've got these racial tensions building up and you've even got the the, the this house of esau edom divided with these all the way from these lower level edomites up to the edomites and the government going at each other's throats Edomites seeing that their governments aren't for their best interests, so they are in an uproar, hence what you're seeing going up in Canada, and then these different heathen governments at each other's, Edomite governments at each other's throats. Russia against the U.S., these European Edomite nations caught in the middle, et cetera, et cetera. Keep going, on. Come on, if I can get this word perplexity real quick. You got it. It's uh, Strong's G640, a Perea, which goes into quandary. And a quandary is a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. Hey, 
And what's it saying? Isaiah chapter 24, they shall they shall seek to find wine and strong drink in the streets, but shall not find it. That's talking about uh, finding answers because we know wines can be symbolic for for philosophies out here. And the only true the only true answers you can find is is from the words of the prophets, ultimately the words of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. And even then, that's a, that's a members only club. You've got to have you got to have you got to be a part of that elect number, and the Most High's got to allow your eyes to be opened and your ears to hear to see this word. So even if you try to seek and understand this word, if it's not meant for you to get it, you're not going to get it. But besides that, what are we constantly seeing? This alternative news. Some of these alternative news people might give you some information, but completely flip a week later, everything's just in a state of confusion out here and people can't find the, the, the answers that they really need. So it's further causing them to be perplexed out here. I got a, I got a scripture real fast. Kind of like what mind frame that we're in, and you should be in, is more or less, it's more or less like a, a prayer. It's in the book of Sirat, uh 36, and I'm going to start at 3 and read down. To about 12 it says uh lift up thy hands against a strange nation and let them see thy power as thou would have sanctified in us before them so be thou magnified among them before us and let them know that all right let them know thee as we know thee all right that there is no power but only thou O yahweh all right show new signs and make other strange wonders Glorify thy hand and the right arm that they may, my bad, that they may set forth thy wonderful works. It says, rise up in the nation and pour out wrath, take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Make the time short, remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let them that escape be consumed by the wrath of fire. And let them perish that oppress the people. It says, smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. All right. And it says, O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name and upon Israel whom thou hast named thy firstborn. And we're seeing, and we're seeing Israel getting gathered back together. The, the, those breaches being closed, the elect from all twelve tribes coming together. As I said, let them know you as we know you, as the brother brought out in Ezekiel chapter thirty-three. And when these things begin to come to pass, and lo, they will come. Then shall they know that a prophet had been among them. And as it says in Zephaniah, I shall get you you fame and praise in every land you're at. It's, and we can start to see a lot of these naysayers. But even though they're dragging their feet with it, come to accept that hey, we we had the truth all along, and it's only gonna and we're only gonna be more magnified as these prophecies continue to come to pass, and they look for this wine and strong drink in the streets, these alternative news outlets and these stream media outlets that I just said they're both flip flopping on their narrative every other week. They seem so confident in one idea, but then the next week it's something else. So people aren't getting straight answers out here. Again. It's going to come to the point to where it's going to be undeniable who had the truth all along. I'm going to go back into the yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. oh, you had a precept back? Yeah, real quick. Just to prove okay, that the Lord's word will, and it's destined, his will will come to pass. Numbers 11 and 23. It says, and the Lord says and said unto Moses, which that's in all caps, that's Yahweh. Is Yahweh's hand wax short? Thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. All right, so again, <laughs> you got it. Oh, no, you, I'll, I'll make my point after you are. Come on, nah, it's going to probably coincide. I read it again. It says, thou shalt see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee or not. Because uh, he mentioned that, say, surely in the, uh, Ezekiel that, they shall know that a prophet been among them. And to prophet, a prophet job is to what? Only say before. But only thing we stand before is what's in the will of the Lord. It's what he's going to do. It ain't what we going to do, how we going to do it. It's all what thus says the Lord through him will do what it is we do. But the Lord say you're going to see 
if my word is going to come to pass and thee unto thee or not, which they clearly saw in this account. That's why the Lord said, I magnify my word above my name because his word goes before his name, man. You got it, bro. And hey, as I said, is my hand short? And, and, and we shall see whether these things, if these things <laughs> I say are going to come to pass or not. And, yeah. and, and by how you're going to see it by the by the mouthpiece, by his prophets preaching these things, you're going to yeah. see who the who the true prophets were and who the false prophets were. As it says in Jeremiah 28, the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied <clears throat> both of, of great destruction, pestilences, wars and downfalls of kingdoms. And then later on, it says a hey, to that prophet that prophesied not of these things, roughly paraphrasing, but prophesied of peace. Let us see which one of these things come to pass. And as we started off in that Joel chapter two, verse 30, he will shoot great signs and wonders in the heavens and in, in the sun, in the moon before the great and terrible day, not the peaceful and happy day of the Lord. So that, that all speaks for itself. Not, nothing good is coming. Only, only death, destruction and judgment. The, the peace and the happiness comes after that. But it's only coming for the nation of Israel. As for everybody else. You're about to get the biggest, the biggest boot turned sideways up your ass. <laughs> That's just all that it is. Okay. Kind, you can keep going in it. Okay. Just back in Luke 21, verse 26. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Mm-hmm. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw of nigh. Kind, kind. And then shall they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And we know that that cloud symbolizes the chariots and who's the, the son of man coming in power and great glory. Yahweh Shai Hamashayak. And like I said a little earlier, I was watching a, a video by the elder bro from South Carolina where he was showing testimonies of other people having dreams about the end. And a couple of them coincided in both of them. The sky was red, the clouds opened up and, and the Messiah came on a white horse. <laughs> it's, 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 it's beautiful. But as it says in 28, and hey, when even though you know, there's a brother, there's a brother, you know, there's a brother in the camp in Atlanta and his sister, you know, one time some years back, uh, actually was giving an interview on t television, man, and and she gave a. I mean, you can then uh, you can you can you can close your eyes and then uh, put your finger on any scripture, any destruction scripture in the apocrypha. She was literally in a vivid dream, basically telling about the destruction and and, and, and the Lord coming back, man. You know, I don't want to say the brother, you know, who the brother is and who, who the brother sister is, but this these are the times where those visions. And, you know, Apostle Tahar talk about how his, his woman has, I mean, in-depth visions of the end times, man. That, that that line perfectly up with the scriptures, man. You know? And it's going to continue to happen until, until these things really come to pass, man. Kind. I'm going to return to 28 again. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. And, and what and, and, and what's been going on a lot too? A hey, chariot sightings out of the wazoo from from one end of the earth even unto the other. The chariot sightings it becomes so so prevalent and intense out here that these different heathen governments have to admit to their existence of them. But as it says in Jeremiah chapter ten verse one, be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, as the heathens are dismayed at them. These astrological signs, the the blood moons and solar eclipses, or the chariots showing up. Because we know that this means that our redemption draweth nigh. And as uh, Yahweh Shai told his disciples in Luke chapter 10, many great men and kings have desired to see these things that ye see and have not seen them. And we're living in the times that all, all the men of the Lord have been diligently waiting for, as they asked Yahweh Shai when he was going back up in Acts chapter 2. And that is now the time that thou shalt restore the kingdom. It wasn't that time showing that thou the thousands of years ago they were ready for it. But hey, we're back in these times through the reincarnation, able to see and hear these things and know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So with that being the case, 
and we're going to constantly stay upon our watch and show our faith by our works to make our calling and election sure and see the downfall of our enemies and Abarak Dazah be that elect number. Yeah, we can start winding down too, bro. Kind, kind. We can end it out with this one. I got one to end it out. Kind, kind. Yeah, well, they, whoever wants right. to go first. When you go, I'm a, um, I'm a wife. I got a couple of them. Kind, this, uh, this Acts chapter 2, because the brother opened with, uh, with Joel 2, is quoting that. It says, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And this is the point right here. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. And we just got a, a testimony from the elder brother. He had a dream where this great storm was coming upon him, but he called upon Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and he was saved. Then again, the brother Amawan Gabar had a dream where people were trying to break into his house, and he called upon the name Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and he was saved and even got spiritual powers in the dream. So with brothers having these dreams and visions, we're calling upon the name of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, brings you salvation. So two, two light bulbs should be going off in your head that hey, when these things come, they do the very exact same things on top of showing your faith in your works, and you should be all right. Abarak uh, these brothers, myself, and you sincere, Akim and Akwa are of that elect number. Hey, which that ultimately proves that in order for them to see these things, or uh, these visions, it had to be in the last days, right? Because the Lord said that it would be in the what? In the end. It says, as Amawa read before that great and notable day of the Lord, all right, which is going to be notable, all right, which these men are giving their testimonies, all right, concerning the end, which we're in. We're in the end of the end. Remember the end, the beginning of the end, is when Yahweh Shai was what? Xed out, man, and crucified ultimately. All right. Now we're in the end of the end. All right. Because even at those those times, they asked, should the kingdom of heaven be restored? All right. And he was like, no, it is not yet. All right. But now we're at the end where the kingdom of heaven, John saw it coming down in Revelation. We're upon that. All right. Right upon that, man. But that must be the destruction first. This Daniel 12 and uh, 13. It says, but go thou thy way till the end be, all right? For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. Got it. And go thou thy way. What does that mean? Hey, go, go to the way of your fathers. Go back up into the spirit world until you come back and stand in your lot. Preaching just like what, what uh, Yahweh Shai told John the Revelator. And hey, you're going to come back and preach before many nations. It's a Daniel. Daniel's back. John the Revelator. Hey, the, the, the men of old, the prophets of old that have prophesied before thee of these things to come are back here in the same lot doing the exact same things. And, and as, as the brother Kaya brought out, the Most High's hand is not short. And these things he said, they're going to come to pass exactly how they, were, how they were written down to come to pass and nothing can be added to it or taken from it. Hey, the prophets of old before, I mean, the prophets that have been before me. And before the of old prophesied against what? Many countries, against great kingdoms of war, of evil, and of pestilence, man. Which is what? Represents the downfall of a kingdom, man. And that's just where we at. All right? So get with it or get lost, man. You got it out. Right? And a lot of these people are going to get lost. They lost right now. But uh, did any other brothers want to make any points? Kind. And so with that, we hope you are sincere. Akim and Akwath were edified by another live Shabbat lesson. And again, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Akim out there, pushing this word in truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you brothers endure until the end. Ababa Ball. Kwam Yasharala. Kwam Yasharala. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.